She's an incredible artist, and she did contribute to the packaging, um, which, thanks to many of your help, uh, was able to was able to come to fruition. Um, so one of the, the reason that we're doing this, what? Okay. So one of the reasons we're doing this is, uh, as you know, we're trying to raise money to be able to take, uh, to be able to produce this album that we spent a lot of time working on, years uh, writing, and then, um, many months recording. Uh, it's done. But we still have just a little bit more work to do. Um, we set ourselves at a $40,000 goal, and we're at 22000 Five hours. You know, we might not have Jerry, we might not have Jerry Lewis here, but I think that uh, together we can make a pretty good internet a -thon. Am I right? Yeah, All right. Yeah, just check in. Be a word party. Drop in. Drop in. Drop in. Drop in. Drop in. We're gonna play some other stuff. Don't leave us. Okay. So we're gonna play the next song. Okay. We're gonna play Marfa, which you wrote for El Cosmico. Oh yeah, and also uh, just. Type questions and we'll answer them while we play. Well, or in, be in between. Well, think about well, it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but please be as uh, critical as you want. We'll answer <laughs> much <laughs> anything in some <laughs> form. <laughs> no, no, just an ask anything. We'll answer in some kind of answer. Whether it be truth or uh, fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This song's Martha. It's on the upcoming album, which hopefully you guys will have in your hands very soon. Thank you so much once again. Oh, yeah, this is our favorite. We're going to play our favorite song right now. Ready? Hello. 
everybody. Claire just came back from tour uh, with a band named Heights. Yeah, you may have seen so them. I have some. I don't have Ready? <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we originally wrote this song for uh, Waterburger, so keep that in mind. Don't keep that in mind. Don't keep that in mind. But tonight, that's what it's about. You're going to find the insides of every song, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Ask anything. This, really comes out. this is the internet. It's supposed to be like this.
ask us a question. I'm going to answer it. Woo! The first question. First question. Dude, is. What is the hardest part of writing a song? Which comes first for you? The music is weird. The music. Yeah, yeah. 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 Every time. Yeah, yeah. We, we usually, um, like. Okay, so the question is what comes first, the music or the lyrics? Our answer. The music. <laughs> um, Nick doesn't normally talk like this. <laughs> in case you were wondering. But yeah, we we we, uh, we write we write the music much earlier, um, sometimes more thorough. But it doesn't mean that the lyrics aren't as deep. But we write the, the music definitely first. The music flows more naturally uh, from us, and so. Internet 2.0 guys. Um, so the, mu the music, I think, it, it feels it feels more natural, um, and just so much of the music making pro uh, process uh, emerges from jamming. So, basically. like, if you want to hear one right now, we'll. So we have this melody we're working on right now. Yeah. So we start with that. We build that, and I look at Nick, and I go, Nick, what do you think? And Nick, <laughs> Nick doesn't speak; he just he just plays. <laughs> So what do you think about that? Yeah, so yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll play a little bit. We'll give you. They have a really great TV show called Nick. Yeah, so we'll, we'll give you. We'll give you a sense of how we write. Um, this is pretty straight from our books. Yeah. Essentially, what we do, we just stare at a wall for 20 hours at a time. Right. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for your question. <laughs> Next question. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do. So Pink Stallion, that was an interesting case. I uh, okay. Well, so this, this is a dream, and which we'll be making the video. Uh, but I dreamed about death, but in the way that you see in the old film. Um, and it basically, we're driving in this car. Uh, it's a pink car, and uh, God is on my right-hand side, and I'm on the left-hand side. And he drives me to this beach, and essentially we watch the world around us collapse. And now Pink Stallion was the car's name, and this was just in my dream. Um, and that's that's about it. So it's it's not it's not just for the sake of the song, and it has some importance. Uh, it's the acceptance of death. 
and um, I'm getting For me, it's an abstraction of nature. You abuse it, you lose it. <laughs> when she took me to the. you different things. This is not a cycle. Tell your friends too. Thank you so much for all your support. And request anything you want. We'll try to accommodate. Oh, I didn't 
Come here. Sandwich time. Yes, sir. And we wrote this next one, the, a lot of the beginnings of it were written in orchestra class. In orchestra class when? Orchestra class, senior year of high school. Senior year. Senior year, yeah. We just sort of sat next to each other in the section and uh, between song, between uh, pieces we would play, I would say, hey, everybody can get this. And of course, Nick would turn around and make them awesome. That's what I took him with him. And, uh, but yeah, so this started in high school. Um, this has been with us for a very long time. And uh, thank you for listening. Darling, I don't care, so let me go. To my mom's home in Wyoming.
that we do play a lot of instruments. There are many in the band. There are many multi instrumentalists in the band. And uh, that same individual also asks if we all have our own guitars or if we share things. And well, it, it's a little bit of both, but really this band is kind of like a social commune. We sort of share most things. Um, and by most things I mean like <laughs> shapes, deodorant toothbrushes, spaces, as you can see. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, the answer to that question is that um, yes, we do share guitars. Um, we have way more guitars than we need. Some guitars uh, are supposed to have, you know, like 12 strings, but instead they have eight. So it's kind of like, you know, an extra special instrument. Um, but yeah, uh, we've all just kind of collected instruments over time, and some instruments sound better than others. But when it comes down to it, my, you know, three $250 guitar that I got in high school is the guitar that we use to record on all of Alhambra, or one of the guitars we used on Alhambra, and um, for many songs on You Knew. It still feels great to say. That's my new album. That's why we're here. Um, but so the, the, the point of that story is that um, the point of that story is that it's not about the gear, it's about what you do with it. So that's right. You don't need a, you don't need a Gibson to be somebody. But Gibson, if you're here, if you're listening to us, uh, we'll take a guitar. Should we do another song or another question? Another question. Another question. Another question. Another question. Hello, world! Hey, Internet. Hi, Internet. Hi. By the way, Ryan Graham, our beloved sound man, who I think should make an appearance because he's always lurking in the shadows behind the sound booth, illuminated by little red and green lights. He should come say hi. Somebody should ask a question for Ryan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, the next question for y'all is, how did you come up with the name Mother Falcon, and do you have plans other than LA and New York? Oh. It's a two-parter. Two-parter. Question of the uh, Okay, um, yes. New York and LA. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, the, 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 repeat the question. <laughs> do we have plans past LA and New York? The tour. The tour. And where did the band end? And where did the band end? Whoa. Okay, that was really good. Okay, um, well, let's answer the tour one first. The tour will be forever. <laughs> so we start in LA and New York, but we will be, we have plans um, as of now throughout the end of November. Uh, but I mean, this is what we do, this is what we want to do. So as long as you love us, uh, well, with your grace, we will be able to do what we do. And if we can do what we do, we will be with you. <laughs> which means you knew. Which means you knew. But but yeah, the, the answer is yes. We have many plans after this. We will be on tour as much as we can get on the road. The second question: Where did the band name came from? Come from? Come from. It came. Uh, Nick, you want to talk about this one? <laughs> Okay, so it came, yeah, Isaac will talk about this one. It came from Bruce Willis from Die Hard. So on TV, right, you have edits. You have edits on TV, and the edit for Motherfucker on Die Hard was Mother Falcon. Which is particularly funny, <laughs> but has a greater context that I'm unaware of, but this is a little of the story. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, it's it's um, sort of a symbol now of where we came from, which was high school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you're 17, I've been in the band since I was 17. Yeah, I've been in the band since I was like crazy. 17 too. Yeah. So yeah, we've been here a long time. Part of my life. We are a family too. Mother, mother is a family word. Falcon is a bird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, again. Okay, anyway. Thank things, you so much. Just work family. Oh, uh, let's play go go. Again, if you're joining us, Indiegogo. Go <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Please, um, thank you for donating go go, to our Indiegogo. Indie go go. And both situations are perfect because exactly what Indiegogo go is about. It's about both supporting the band, but also its message and the tour that takes this message on the road to you. Um, so thank you so much for your support.
for your continued support. Whoa, we just hit 23,000! <laughs> And if there's any song you guys want to hear out there that we're not playing, just tell us and we'll Even play it. Even if we don't know it, for yeah, like $500, we'll, oh, all right. $500 we'll read the chorus off of the internet and play it. Okay, so Taylor Swift, everybody. Right. Uh, oh, shit. I'm probably going to do this for every year. Oh, my God. 
$2,500 option. Us in a living room in your house. Turn around. <laughs> you, what you see behind you is your house. Aww. Then look forward and what you see is us in your house. <laughs> really, it's that simple. <laughs> so, hey, but there's one difference. There's one difference. The internet is the internet and real life is real life. And so that's a big difference. So one day we hope we can get to your living room and play for you. Because there's nothing better than playing in a living room for you. <laughs> not, but I'm not kidding. Like, it's really, really would be awesome. It's, I mean, we've been playing live music forever. Um, a lot of us met in a quartet program early on. ACMC, Austin Chamber Music Center, Rep. Um, and, you know, we've just been playing on stage with kids since the age of three. You know, when your parents don't want to deal with you, what do they do? They put you on stage. <laughs> <laughs> If you cry, it's your fault, right? And so, in that sense, it was a hard life. No. In that sense, we just, this is what we do, this is our lifeblood, and the closer we can get to you, the better, all be. the better we all will be. But anyways, thank you again so much for watching. If you're just plugging in, this is Mother Falcon Live. <laughs> Uh, playing for your help in our Indigo campaign, which ends at 2 a.m. Central time, because we are central to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll take a question or two first. Yeah. We're going to take a question, but then we'll be right with you. Thank you. I mean, we're still going to be with you. We'll be with you, Ryan. We'll be right with Ryan because Ryan asked if we could. Thank you, seven people who asked. Thank you, Fernanda. Thank you, Tina. Fernanda, by the way. Hey. Okay, so we gotta finish this song. Elliot Sawyer from what looks like Catsville has a little cat avatar. So basically, yes, he's from the collective internet. Um, so Elliot Sawyer uh, asks, how do your neighbors feel with music from so many instruments playing frequently? Well, the answer is... They can't hear them! Is they, well, we're all acoustic, so it never really gets that loud. 
But you know, we're all we're all you know young twenty something. So let's just say we've made a lot more a lot more noise uh, on other occasions um, on Saturday or Friday or Saturday night. So. We we never had the cops called on us during rehearsal. However, it does help to have acoustic instruments because I remember this show a long time ago um, at our friend's house. Um, we were playing a house party uh, in his friend's garage, and of course the cops come because they're sort of like the special guests. If you don't have cops, you don't really have a party. And so at this party, the cops come, they open the door, and we're there with our instruments. But our instruments are acoustic, and they're wrapped in like blue and green cases. And the cops were like, oh, are you guys having rehearsal? And we're like, oh yes, we just came from a concert. And they're like, okay, well we won't, we'll leave you guys alone. And so they left. <laughs> and so they really, acoustic instruments do help by warding, warding off the cops. If you ever cop on a few pill out of a violin. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> all you people in band. Uh, Always the time a cello. Is but yeah, but in that sense, the neighbors, uh, we love them because they they put up with us. But for the most part, yes, acoustic instruments don't travel too far outside. The worst that we've had is the horns when they warm up outside on the front lawn. That's usually at 3 to 5 p.m. when most people are on walks or at work. Uh, so thank you for your question. <laughs> also, Derek uh, Vergara says, hi, Ryan. Uh, and so is, so is Ryan Elliot Sawyer. Hi back. Okay. Ryan says, hi, hello. <laughs> and if you have any questions about sound and how we do the sound, what kind of mics you need to get if you want to play, um, or just how Ryan does it, please also ask. He's as much of a part of this Ryan's as we are. Ryan's number is 512. <laughs> Um, but Ryan's also very really eloquent, much more eloquent than any of us, so please bug him and not... No, I'm just kidding. Please bug yeah. him. Ryan is on the internet at all hours. So. Okay. Yes, the only one is 
got it. Question. I was actually hurt. So that, um, <clears throat> so this is like the opposite of a filibuster. We're gonna switch faces for a second. Okay. Introduce you to someone new that you might not know. Jesse Rhodes. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Some say he looks like Ashton Kutcher. Others say he looks like a man. Or Gilman. That you find a nerve. Anyways, uh, let's see. Come here. Let's see. Ready to shot? Hello. Um. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you all know what, the, what an Indiegogo campaign is. It's it's, called, it's a crowdfunding campaign, which what, what that means is we ask you to help us uh, <laughs> have money to, to do what we need to do. Um, basically, you, our fans, are our investors. So just like a, it, it's like you're investing in our art, and it, and by giving us money, you're sort of demonstrating your belief in us. We really appreciate it. Um, sort of some of the cool things that you can get if you. Uh, Donate to any Gogo campaign. We have uh, some special vinyl presses of our Dirty Summer uh, seven inch that we uh, we made um, last year, and we have we have some special posters to go on with the album. And like the real fancy, uh, real fancy awards is you give us a lot of money, a number that I can't recall. Uh, we'll like we'll come to your house and we'll play a show, or you give us. A whole lot of money. Uh, we'll throw a party for you at oh, the Scottish also, Rite Theater. Also, we're going to be in New York and Los Angeles this summer, and that's part of this whole uh, epic um, campaign, which has like four hours left. So we're spending um, part of the part of this investment is going to um, branching outside of Austin, um, and so we're effectively bringing the Lone Star State to you. So exactly, Lone Star State to you. Um, so we might even bring some Lone Star, but that'll cost extra. Yeah, so, you know, we have to pay that and everything, and, and nobody we, wants to do we'd that. We have to keep it cold. Um, weird. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so what I'm saying is, we'll, for the month of June, we'll be in New York, and we're going to be performing um, uh, most days of the week um, at different venues, and we're going to be doing that week after week. So we have residencies at um, <laughs> currently Joe's um, Joe's Pub. Joe's Pub. Uh, which we are totally elated and excited for. Um, and there we're going to be collaborating with other artists. Um, so you'll hear a little bit of Mother Falcon, and you'll hear a little bit about uh, a little bit of whoever we're playing with. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, collaborate in the end. Um, and this is just really exciting because, um, you know, these, these parties and these uh, living room shows aren't just limited to Austin. We can bring that party to your living room in New York <laughs> bring for the, the weekend. Falcon to you. We will we will put a bird on it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah. So even if you're in like Boston or something, or uh, if you're in you know upstate New York, we're we're traveling to these cities on the weekends because all of our residencies are during the week. So um, you know after a show, we'll come to your house. We'll hang out. We'll make some music. We'll stay up as late as you want. We'll, whatever. We'll bring in the sunrise. Whatever. <laughs> You know. Um, and also, goes so, for out Los Angeles. We'll do that too. I think I don't know. Uh, there's a video we made on our update page, sort of talking about the same stuff. And uh, the other sort of the secret, where all, a lot of the money goes, in addition to us paying for the gas to get to New York and LA, and paying for the housing while we're there, and paying for the food we're gonna eat, because um, we're a big damn collective and uniform. Um, but it's also helping us pay to get the word out, and, and so we're sort of we're, we're using this money to spread the good news of Mother Falcon and try and get it, get as many people to hear us as possible. Um, and it's really it's an important part of of building our music and expanding expanding it out to uh, more people around the country. Are we? What's what's going on? Oh yeah, so uh, we got some questions here. I'm not sure. I have. Uh, okay, we'll get this you want to talk right? about the sure. together? Yeah. Are you, do you want to take a rest? Yeah, make some tea or something. Yeah, I'm gonna make some tea. Okay. Um. <clears throat> all right. So what do we got? So this is the. Let's see. We, I think that's the. I think that's the most recent one. Oh, hi Maritza, if you're still watching and listening. 
She uh, says, yes. She says, Tamir! Which is an inside joke. Oh, okay. And now, you, now it's not inside anymore. It's not so inside. Now it's an out. It's broadcast. Ew. Ew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no offense to you. Just breaking shit. Oh, so the question. The question is, uh, Justin Leggett asks, um, or Justin Legit, you never know. know. <laughs> uh, what is your writing process like? Anything that you figured out in your time together, or how the process has progressed from a new band to where you are now? This has been awesome. That's not a question. Um, <laughs> thanks, though. Okay, so for the first two parts, uh, <laughs> Samir, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I mean, there's no, you know, there's no idea that's a bad idea except for the bad ones. Yeah. But you won't know that they're, you, you, know, you won't know if they're bad unless you try them. So that, that's like the whole, like, you know, it's almost the ethos of the band because you wouldn't believe some of the crazy stuff that's been brought, like crazy musical stuff that's been brought to the table. Where we're just like, no, that's not going to work. And then we try it, and then it actually ends up becoming like a whole new song. So, you know, our writing process, you know, starts with maybe one or two individuals who bring a chord progression and some lyrics or an idea. Or, or, or even just like a melody, just like a little melody that they think is Like this is stuck in my head. Like if you were tuned, yeah. if you tuned in earlier, you saw Nick and uh, the cellos and some of the rest of the band um, playing this song that really sounded more like a technical delay. Um, <laughs> but that's, you know, it's a cool new effect. Uh, so, yeah, and so then, so then from there, once we have this sort of this initial snippet, uh, first of all, play it for the band, and oftentimes we just sort of play it and play it and play it, and everyone else will listen along and try and figure out how they can play something that fits in, and so we'll start that process, and then someone will play something that's maybe, maybe an accident or just sort of expanding upon the idea, and that'll be like, oh, that's that sounds cool. Let's work on that, and then let's, we'll build the song piece by piece like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we also, I mean, we're oh, like, yeah, yeah. in many ways, like, we actually are a mini orchestra because uh, we have sections of, of instrumentalists. We have a cello section, a string section, and we have horns, and we have an accordion section. So I am my own section. <laughs> a section leader. of horns. A well, section. What? I mentioned that it's more of a chamber orchestra. Okay, it's more we, of a chamber orchestra. We because rely on we're splitting hairs. To each other. Okay, Clara, uh, <laughs> Clara says that we're more of a chamber orchestra because we rely on listening to each other. Um, so, chamber, chamber cha yeah. Chamber um, so yeah, we do have section leaders, um, and so what, one of the cool things is that sometimes we'll all be a song will be written simultaneously in like three different rooms, and then we'll come together, and it'll just like fit together like gears. It's really yeah. cool. And it, it's kind of interesting because I don't think sort of only in a band like this would would we have the opportunity to and sort of the the need to to, to have to like go and workshop. Parts and take all the strings and go and just play a part so we can nail it that it's in tune and it's got all the harmonies that we want and it's, it's a really sort of interesting working process and yeah it's it's unique I think because unlike an, an orchestra like uh, if you play in high school where someone you walk into the room you're given a, a piece of music to play and the, the goal is to make that piece of music sound good you don't you just have to come up with it and then work on it to make it sound good. Uh, yes, we all write our own parts. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so for, oh my gosh. <laughs> Mother Falcon exclusive, Indiegogo <laughs> exclusive only. You don't even have to pay to hear this. We're just going to play it. So we're talking about the, the songwriting process. So um, right now, while, while some of the band, you know, gets up and rests and, and goes, uh, you know, on a uh, half mile uh, uh, marathon run, um, <laughs> I'm gonna do. Just getting the blood flow. Yeah, the blood I'm gonna I'm gonna play a song um, that I've been working on for a very long time, um, and I've I've played it to the band uh, a couple times. Um, but you know this is the way it works. It it the, the songwriting process takes a very long time. Sometimes it happens instantaneously and spontaneously. Other times it's cooking in the oven. You know, it's like a like a slow roasted brisket versus uh you know I don't know raw roast on a grill. Both are delicious. Here we oh, go. That's a good one.
it just it exists in that form uh, for a really long time, and then somehow it it uh, it just comes, <laughs> comes together. I mean, it's you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So Clara brought up a, a good point. Um, one song that sort of sat in. Uh, Cooked a long time. <laughs> that, that took it was a long time from first writing to really a finished product. Was this one called Blue and Gold that we uh, actually Blue and Gold first appeared before I joined the band. Uh, we should Nick should play that like right well, now. We should play it when yeah, we there's a link. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a link to the old version. I will yeah. do that right now. Oh, well, that's Tamir good... tells us about what happened next. Um, yeah, well, I'm actually not the best person to inform uh, <laughs> of what happened next because yeah. I was uh, in Boston. Um, while this was happening, so um, because I'm a photographer by day, uh, and I had an internship at the Boston Globe, so uh, last summer that's where I was, and and uh, Blue and Gold um, was rearranged uh, to, you know, it was just rearranged. And so it, Blue and Gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll play it soon. So we're yeah we're gonna play it for you the newest version of Blue and Gold. Um, this one was written freshman year of college. It's come to mean a lot more. <laughs> Now, as you listen to the song, and if you can hear the lyrics, try to chase, tr try to trace the colors, the colors, and the transformation of the colors lead and symbolize the narrative, which will be unveiled tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Again, if you're just tuning in, we are Mother Falcon. Thank you so much. This is part of our Indiegogo last five, six hours spree. Thank you so much for everyone who's well. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you. And secondly, thank you so much for donating. Um, we're already mind blown by the amount that we've been given, and. Any more would also supremely help. <laughs> Further blow our minds. Further blow our minds. And uh, just want to say we're here with you right now, live. Turn around. Then turn back and realize you're in front of us. Black and blue, blue and gold, red. Anything to turn your head. So look at me. Don't just look at me. Gloss of pain, pain. Be the best at what I do. I just want you. I just. And I. Not like this. No. No, it's not like this. Is that a temple I spy? I keep it simple. I try to to you. Love to call every day and every night for the kiss between the birds. Still come back, I'll still come back because No, it's not like this you That is not 
my life this How could this ever be In the ecstasy So when you believe I'm on my knees Backdrops of black and gold Flickering through red and blues I'm on my knees Grilling you As the golden reds, baby blues and blacks Anything to turn you back So look at me Will you just look at me? Cross pain and twist and shame Tiny brittle metal ring That once had soon Now can only sting And you might have just noticed, but you knew the last part of that song is the title of our album. Any questions? <laughs> 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 Oh, sorry. You can do once again. And uh, I'd just like to say, while we tune, that uh, we are very thankful for all your donations and that. The uh, the live concert can be taken to New York and can be taken to LA. So if you are in New York Valley right now and you want your own private gig, it's not too late. You can have us, all of us, in your living room, playing live for you at the same time. But please, thank you so much again, and we are still fighting teeth and neck for the forty thousand. If we can make it tonight, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much again. This is Mother Falcon and this is Indiegogo. This is live, unedited, uncut, raw footage. Live from Austin, Texas. Live.
everybody who supported it so far. Um, I don't know if anyone said this before, but this is a really rare band because there's so many of us. And because there's so many of us, you know, the just making it work economically is really a lot harder than it would be if there were you know, three or four of us. We can't just get in the band and tour. To tour is like really a, a huge endeavor for us. So um, this kind of thing is really the only way we can make it happen. And uh, and this cello part is going to give you a real sense of uh, just how ominous it is for us to tour. It's like the soundtrack to the tour. But um, but yeah, if you if you'll consider donating, you know you've seen all the different um, all the different tiers. You know where you can get for ten dollars. I think you can get a CD. And. Uh, what am I doing here? So I'm just learning as I go, so... Oh, here's a, here's a question that I can answer. Do any of you do any work with non-Western music? Uh, do you use a bus instead of a band? This comes from late. The second question is really easy to answer. We don't have a bus. We, I think, have a really big van and are going to tour up to New York in a one van and then like one SUV, pretty much. The van will be split in two between these two vehicles. Though I really would like to get a school bus sometime and, and tour in that. If anybody um, wants to contribute to the Indiegogo by donating a school bus, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Or if anybody sees a school bus on Craigslist and you just want to send us a link, I think you know we'd be. But yeah, we we take school buses in addition to <laughs> cash donations. And also, <laughs> yeah. um, but needs the, to, we only take a school bus if it has a fish tank in it. Uh, there's another question here. It is: Do any of you do any work with non-Western music? Um, and I know that Tamir is really into Balkan and Eastern European music. Um, <laughs> and yeah. Sterling, who's... I played in the Balkan Wait, yeah. In Denver. Oh, in Denver, uh, yeah, Sterling went to school in Denver, so he played in a Balkan brass band there. Tamir lived in Prague for a while, for a year, right? Um, and really, I think started, I think it's fair to say, started his accordion shops on that kind of music. I have always been really interested in Arabic music, and... Uh, play a little bit of oud, which is like this sort of Middle Eastern oud, um, and just really love that style of music. There's a lot of quarter tones, you know, where it's like in between flat and natural. Um, and just really love like the way that improvisation figures into that kind of music. Does anybody else play a lot of non-Western music? Oh, they're in a Brazilian band. Oh, they're in a Brazilian band. That's way cooler. Oh, I guess that's technically Western Hemisphere. <laughs> yeah, South American. Um, Anyone else, guys? Also, so we just had a, we had a question from earlier asking if we were playing any time in Austin before we leave town. And oh. we're playing our CD release show on May the 11th at the Belmont. Um, so, yeah. Is it true? Check it out. I don't know if this is going to cross some weird universe parallel, but we just got sent a picture of a school bus <laughs> on Craigslist. And it only costs... Well, it's from 1995, and it costs $3,000. Wow. That's really not that much. And my favorite part, my favorite part of it, just for everyone to know, my favorite part is that it says blank ISD. So, like, they want to cover up what school district it came from. Or something. <laughs> like, nobody tell anyone that ISD. 
Do you sell like a school bus? And then uh, somebody says, wait, going back, just one question. Yeah, there was one that was like, where, where is your favorite place to play? Dot, 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 Houston. dot, dot, Houston. <laughs> so there's an answer in the question on that one. Houston. But actually, Houston is awesome because there's the Orange Show, right? Yeah. Somebody want to tell them about that show? Anybody want to describe the Orange Show? Yeah, well, you haven't said a lot. Yeah, well, so I'm meeting Matt. My name's Matt. And, um, there was also show. a question about who is Matt Krolik, so this is... I heard it was who or what. This is a Matt I both of those things. But, um... Also, the Orange Show is just this crazy thing that this basically this guy you know, like collected all these like leftover construction materials from around Houston, and over a 30-year period built this crazy venue, like a sort of a labyrinth type maze type deal where you literally don't know how to get to your seat, and you have to walk around for 20 minutes to figure it out, and um, and you might get lost going to the bathroom, which I did. And um, it was just a crazy, awesome show, and um, it would, and you get an orange when you leave. It was quite the thing. And uh, yeah, it was really awesome. So I'm gonna do that thing that they do on KUT when they're having a funding drive, which is bring up the Indiegogo every five minutes. Uh, so if you're new, because maybe some people have just tuned in and are learning what this is for the first time, uh, we're Mother Falcon, uh, or a bunch of members of Mother Falcon. And we're doing a live countdown to the end of our Indiegogo campaign, uh, which is a campaign where we're basically funding our second album and the tour that goes along with it. The album's called You Knew, and it comes out on May 7th. Um, and for the first time, really, in our band's career, we're taking it like very seriously on the road. And so we're going to take it to New York in June on the East Coast, and then we're going to take it to the West Coast, sort of based in L.A., for all of August. Um, and actually, somebody just asked us, do you all have venues booked for your tour of the East and West Coasts? And the answer is some. Uh, I know that, and this is maybe a, a uh, Google Plus exclusive fact, I know that we're playing every Sunday in June at Joe's Pub. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. At Joe's Pub in Manhattan. Um, you can check. It'll be up on our website. We're playing every Tuesday at a club called Littlefield that's in Brooklyn. I know that we're booked for Philadelphia, if anyone out there is in Philadelphia, Hi. on uh, June 22nd. And there we'll be playing the Radiohead OK Computer cover set. And we'll also give a little preview of that tonight. So stay tuned. Yeah, if you guys do the late the late hours, you're going to get some Radiohead. So stick around for that. And maybe even some basketball. basketball. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, let's do a challenge goal. Idea. We can hit 24,000 uh, before, what time is it now? Yeah. It's 10.30. Yeah. So if we can play, if we can hit 24,000 before 11. Like, we'll all eat a spoonful of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cinnamon <laughs> challenge. Don't you? You guys don't I heard that that's that. deadly. Um, so, oh, someone says, just so you all know, someone says, if you ever play St. Louis, you are all welcome to stay at my place. Thanks, yeah. Terry McCoy. You're going to regret that one. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else says, uh, um, come back and play, come play the Black Cat in D.C. Oh my god, oh my I'm yes. from D.C., I love that venue so much. Whoever you are, I grew up in Bethesda, well, Kensington, Maryland. So. It's Eric Brody. Eric Brody. Thank you. Eric Bro, hey, Eric Brody, you're my bro, man. <laughs> we grew up next to each other, bro. Um, Fred Schmidt has a great comment here. He says, the $3,000 for the school bus is a stretch goal. Let's get these guys to their 40000 40k album and NYC in LA first, and then they can take 43k and get a bus too. Hey man, yeah. 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 let's say let's say if we can reach 24,000 by 11 o'clock, yeah. we'll play. Where are we at now? What are we gonna play? Uh, what do they want us to play? What do you want us to play? We'll take requests. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take requests. Literally anything. Oh, here's a, here's one. Well, we can work on a cover. Literally anything. Should should I ask this question because it just rolled in? <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, is this really an ask us anything question? Yeah, okay. ask us anything. Is Claire single? Uh, <laughs> Claire? Hey, hey, hey. No comment. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have to end up all of us. Yeah. Yeah, but but if Claire is single, which we don't know if she is or she isn't, she has like eleven older brothers. Yeah. One of which is actually her brother. So. so you better be a sweetheart. <laughs> hey. Uh, okay. So. 
Sire asked a good question. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any more cash to give. Is there any other way I can help you all out? Ooh. Um, well, tell your friends, friends about this. Yeah. 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 Order tell your friends. Go. Post it on Facebook. Order uh, yeah. And yeah, just I mean, honestly, I think spreading the word is the most important thing because you know, I mean, I personally like if I were not in this band, I don't know how much money I could give. It would probably only be ten or fifteen dollars, but. That's I think a lot. The, the, that's a lot, and the best way that I could do something for the band would be to tell everyone I know, because you know, you can um, you only get so many shots to tell all your friends what you think is great. Before you knew, um, <laughs> <laughs> Nick Gregg punning since 1980. <laughs> um, hey, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up this new forum where we'll play a few songs, and then each band member will have a minute interview. So to start thinking about questions you want to ask specific members, and you'll have just them to yourselves. By the way, let's introduce ourselves again. We are Mother Falcon. This is the kicks or the Indiegogo <laughs> webathon, and uh, we'll go one by one from the left. Stage left. So, by the way, before we start this, I just want to tell you some of the requests that rolled in. We got the Mariners' Revenge Song by the Decemberists. Uh, we got Master Fade by Andrew Bird. And then we got some easier ones. We got Two Mama. We got Dancing Shoes. Whoever dropped dancing shoes just got some amazing. Oh, yeah. Twenty-four thousand to play dancing shoes. And uh, oh yeah, dancing shoes and his Claire single. Man, you were. <laughs> yeah. Inside your question. Uh, so then we got Stairway to Heaven. We got Twenty Two by Taylor Swift, and then we have an, e an equally well-known song, Paper Flowers by Mother Whoa. Okay. How about this? At twenty four thousand, we'll play both dancing shoes and paper flower. Yeah, twenty two. No, I. Yeah, that's, that's that's twenty two by Taylor Swift is definitely like a thirty k, thirty five k kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, personally. Uh, so yeah, let's go around. Let's do our, our minute. Uh, go for it. No. Oh, are we doing? No, let's let's play a song. Let's play a song. Let's play a song. Let's introduce ourselves. Introduce. We play and we'll play a song. Yeah. Introduce ourselves. Song. All right. Cool. Hi everybody, I'm Sterling Stevin. I am a saxophone player, person, teacher. I enjoy playing with these people, they're my family. And thank you so much for tuning in and watching us, and hopefully we'll bring you some joy on a Monday night. And I am Andrew Fontenot, I play the tenor sax, I'm a Libra, and uh, <laughs> I'm also a teacher, and I um, and love playing love with us, I don't know if you my hand right now. My name is Diana Burgess. I play the cello in Mother Falcon. I am a sophomore at UT studying music. Um, this is mostly what I like to do. <laughs> My name is Clara Brill. I play violin. I also go to the UT Butler School of Music, um, and I am so happy to be having you guys with me in the living room. And Nick and Ryan and Michelle. But you also have. She is a homeowner. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Um, I'm Maurice Shama, and I play violin in Mother Falcon, uh, and I sing a little, um, occasionally some piano. And in my outside life from other talking, I'm a journalist and write for different publications, which segues to Tamir. That's right. My name's Tamir Khalifa. Uh, we're all in uh, our living room, our being, because, you know, we're like communists. Uh, this is our living room, and you could be a part of that, too, if you wanted to. Um, we're not. Uh, I play accordion and piano, mizuki, guitar, uh, and, I, and I sing, too. Um, and I'm also a photographer during the day, and I work with Maurice uh, at the Texas Tribune. So if you're in Texas and get the New York Times, check uh, the Friday and Sunday edition. You might see our pictures or articles. Isaac? Oh. <laughs> you might want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like a lot of things. I really like people. I like laughing. I like smiling. Funny music is great. I love eggs. <laughs> oh, okay. I can eat at least more eggs a day for the rest of my life. And if I met you, I'd probably love you, and that's not even like kind of kidding. 
<laughs> Can I interject with a comment? Yes. Somebody just wrote to us, I ain't giving no dough to no commies. <laughs> <laughs> but we are in America, so just naturally we're coming. <laughs> Whoa, hey. <laughs> Those yeah. sensors fucking internet. <laughs> <laughs> right, Claire. Claire. Children, um, hi. Children are awake. Hello, I'm Claire. Um, I've been playing my soccer since I was 17 years old. Um, there's a lot of other people there. Um, I wait tables sometimes. <laughs> 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 Are you single? No, she's double date. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you at two in the morning. Oh! We hit forty thousand. You will learn if Claire is single or not. Um, <laughs> that's the internet. Yeah. That's the internet. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I know the guy called. We just went on tour and we came back to the video. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, and there was a question about math rock and high school kind of math rock, so I'm going to bring that into the class. I never know that yet, but it's going to be a little bit of math to me. It's really weird. Count to five. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Matt. Um, I'm finishing up architecture school at the UT School of Architecture. Um, so I just got here. Um, Nick's also in the same program. Uh, that's how we met. Um, I'm a designer. I uh, design many things. I just me and Sterling just put a growing column. And it's a shame. Check, check, you know, you'll see pictures of it on our Tumblr maybe. Um, but anyways, uh, I play trumpet in Mother Falcon, and uh, it's kickass. I love it. And I love all of you guys. And uh, hopefully you heard what I just said. <laughs> yeah, I, we just got a comment that we should all speak louder. So if you didn't hear some, um, something, just tell us, and we'll say it louder and clearer. Uh, I'm Dusty Rhodes. I play bass, Mother Falcon, um, and I am I'm a history and chemistry major from the University of Texas at Austin. Yeah. And I'm about to graduate, so thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, hey, also, by the way, my little sister's <laughs> watching right. Right now, she wants to say hello. So, hello, Susan. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah. Thank you. Woo. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm Ryan Graham. I'm the audio engineer for this group of people. Uh, I do lighting design, audio design, audio engineering. I'm a student at UT in the theater department, doing technical theater. Um, I also study physics at UT for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> That's the theory. Um, study? That, that was interesting. <laughs> I'm not a troll, thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah. You have a lot of time on Reddit. I do. I just posted this on Reddit. So if you have an account on Reddit, upvote up, up the crap out of this so more people will see it. Yeah, let's front page this crap. Yeah. Reddit, babe. Right. Reddit it. Get it. Right. Right. Next. Uh, I'm Nick, Greg, um, and I've been most popular since I was uh, <laughs> 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 I wrote four blah, blah when I was five. So that's just something. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, this is the family, and this is uh, what we do, what we love. And we do this every day. You know, you, when you ask yourself why you wake up in the morning, this is why. You know your own reasons. But this is why we wake up in the morning. This is why we not wake up in the morning. You. And uh, and I'm also in orchestra school with Matt. Um, learning to build things. Um, but this is I can't. You know, this is better. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for your time, okay, right. and uh, we'll stop talking and playing. Uh, go to the, go to the one good question. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, multiple good questions. What? <laughs> it's the best one. Frank Sabra asks, would you release a song or two from the new record that stems and back to the remix? Yes. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Be pretty much pretty yeah so, okay, so, so the question is, will we release stems from our new album so that you guys can remix them? And tweak them in any way. The answer is yes, of course. And today's world of music, there is nothing better than the collaboration that Humanji allows. I want anyone and everyone to split these things apart. We only wrote them in one way, but they can be totally changed. And we want to hear your input. So once the album's released, we will have a week or two 
where the center will be available with competitions presenting your, our favorite remixes, <laughs> your best work. But on top of that, yes, just just uh, please mess around with everything we have. Uh, we'll be giving to you soon. The internet is true. Yeah, and by the way, our album is streaming on NPR. Yes. So what you can do right now is just record, live stream, and take an audacity and you can cut it up. Okay. Not stems just yet, but you can at least glitch it out. That's, stuff, <laughs> that's what dubstep <laughs> is. Not so yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yes, we will have it available. Thank you for the question. Yeah. What song are we playing? We will be what playing. What song do they want? Oh, yeah. What, what do they want? Somebody wanted to mom up. Let's do that. Yes, we'll play to mom yeah. This song was written in high school. We also promised not to do the thing. Did we already do that? Oh, I was, I was cool. We should just watch the same. Okay, yeah. So for everyone who's already seen this once, thank you. Play it again. Play better every time. Again, this is the cool thing. Uh, uh, for this tour, we'll be taking 17 people. So these arrangements that you hear are, are constantly changing. Now that Maurice is in, now that Tamir will be singing, you're going to hear a completely different version of the same song. And that's the beauty of music. So we'll play it again. Uh, yeah.
I love what? yeah too. All right, so we have a chant. We have this. We have this chant we want to share with you right now. And it just uh, type it while we type it, or while we, while we say it. And it goes, yes, 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 yes. Anyways, that was uh, that, that was our favorite song. Okay, we're we're gonna extend the mer the mer the dancing shoes and paper flowers thing, whatever it's called. What was it called? Um, still twenty four. Twenty four for dancing shoes. We're at twenty three four thirty five. If we hit, if we hit, okay, this is like timeless. If we hit twenty four k, we will play dancing shoes and marigolds. So no, no, wait, no. no. Shoes, I mean, dancing shoes and paper flowers. That's right. We haven't played in like two, like five years. I'm still, still, still waiting I got to unleash it. Yeah, let me read the song. It's for you and me. We'll figure it out. Be happy. Figure it out. Just say three. Oh, I'm gonna say one thing quickly. Hey, so, uh, this song is on our new album. And it's also on our first EP, Silla. And one of the major differences is that there's drums on the new version that Matt Puckett plays. But Matt Puckett's not here, so we're going to play the original version. Kind of. Sort of. Or are you going to play some drums on it? Did I just make that up? I think we're going to play saxophone and drums at the same time. That's even better. Again, thank you so much for listening and watching. It wouldn't be possible without you guys, seriously. Thank you.
for requesting that. That was really fun. <laughs> oh, and this is really sad. Somebody said that this song makes me miss my girlfriend so much. Aww. Aww. We're sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really bad. Yeah, that's <laughs> rough. No, yeah. your girlfriend's just like out of town. Music and... Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. She's out of town. <laughs> no, details. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> is the mic placement okay? Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. My mom's calling. Talk to her. Hi, Ema. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, it's my dad. Okay, well, uh, I was going to talk in Hebrew, but you should uh, you should um, join us in a Google Hangout. This is my dad, everybody. Uh, oh, you're already with us. <laughs> my dad's already watching us. Oh, we're on Reddit. Yes. Okay, we got to go. I love you, Dad. Okay, bye. My, uh, my, my, my dad says we should turn the mic down, so maybe we should bring the mic back a little bit. Okay. Okay, thanks, Dad. Right, thanks, and all the other dads out there. Oh, hey, thank you, my dad. Speaking of which, maybe it's time to play a song about Dad. Can we handle that? Yeah. Dad? Thank you for requesting this indirectly, or perhaps reminding us of this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really know enough about it. So anyways, one of our dearest friends, Chandler Wyatt, he has set us up a Bitcoin wallet for Mother Falcon. We will be accepting donations through Bitcoin. If any of you internet people know what that is, it's a great thing. Um, a lot of people don't know what it is, but if you've got some Bitcoins just jingling around in that digital wallet of yours, you want to pass them our way. We would love you forever. Coin Thank it. you so much. We'll coin that shit. It's real. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, you found a Bitcoin? This is a uh, We Are Mother Falcon uh, on your screen, and we are loving with you the last few hours of our Indiegogo campaign. Thank you for joining three us. Hours we have three hours left. And we need $17,000. Yeah. So, <laughs> Luke Skywalker saved the world in like 20 minutes, so not too hard. Two long walls, 
I love you. <laughs> you knew that we love you, young. And you still know. Matt Puckett will be joining us shortly. Yeah, if you stick around, Matt Puckett will be here, fresh off his hot stinted toy door. If we get twenty-four thousand dollars, we'll let Matt in the door. We're gonna right now. Yeah, before we play our next song. Before, before we, before, okay, so we're gonna switch up for our next song, and what I'd like you to talk about potentially um, is another thing that we're doing this summer, which the money will also go towards, which is our summer camp. Okay. Would yes. you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Again, please introduce yourself. Yes. My name is Diana. I play cello for Mother Falcon. It's amazing! <laughs> Last summer, we did our very first Mother Falcon Music Laboratory. And I had so much fun. I wasn't going to the camp. I was teaching at the camp. But it was an amazing experience. We had nine kids from the age of, was it nine to 15, yeah. about? Um, they all played string instruments. One girl played guitar and flute. Um, and we, we put them into little bands. And at the end of the week, all of them had a brand new song written, a band t-shirt that they made, some posters, and they just had a great time. Yeah, we had a big show, I remember, on Friday night at the end of the camp. Mm -hmm. Um, and a bunch of people came, not just the parents yeah, of the band, yeah. but I think like all sorts of people came out. Uh, it was a Scottish Rite Theater for this big ending thing. Um, and we, we all, we were all the teachers and coaches for the different bands, and we had guest artists come in and perform every day for the kids and give them talks. We had Sterling did a workshop a little on little type thing, yeah. yeah. We had Graham Reynolds come in also, which was really special for us to talk about music yeah, business and stuff, so we try to introduce the kids to things that they don't usually maybe get exposed to. Um, we did stretches, we did alternative technique styles, and yeah. to show how much this camp means to us, I mean, we went into it not knowing even if there was, like, going to be very much money made for us at all in the first place, but it was so much fun, and we put our all into it, and, um... Yeah, and we even, like, um, we had, uh, basically, art classes, me and Nick um, showed them how to make posters and um, shirts out of uh, making stencils and then putting bleach on your, on the black shirt to create their own band t-shirts for the concert and logos. And um, basically, the whole thing was how to build your own band. And um, the Mother Falcon Music Laboratory, and again we'll be doing summer. it again this summer. We've actually got, a, we've got some videos from, from that. Share yeah. yeah, we have yeah. videos of the yeah. final performances of the three bands that performed last year. We're all really so proud. Yeah. 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 I, th I think the most important thing to remember is that within any music community or just community in general, it's always the kids who are going to be doing the next biggest thing. So for us to be able to give back to that younger community and help them develop their skills, that's going to allow your area to grow and flourish artistically creatively, whatever you want to do, business-wise, if you're into that, so um, it's really joyful to get back with kids. So even, so even if your kid, or you have a kid that doesn't even really know how to play the instrument very well, as long as they can make any kind of sound on it, that's what we're asking for. Yeah. And this harkens back to, you know, any alternative screen camps that we've been to. This is, this is our interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi mind trick. Um, but so I've got kind of a, a, a funny 
story about the song that we're about to play. Um, so, in uh, in 2009, one of my best friends and I, Marisa, Marisa Petrino, who I hope is watching right now, um, we went to go see Radiohead at All Points West Festival in New York. Um, and I grew up adoring Radiohead, and OK Computer is my, was one of my favorite albums of any band of all time. And um, Radiohead was playing, and we had been waiting in this crowd for hours and hours and hours so that we could be close enough to experience the glory. And my favorite song of all time uh, is what we're about to play. And uh, during the most incredible moment of this song, when I was just absolutely elated, the person right in front of me fainted. Or something. <laughs> it was a surprise, and so like EMS and had to like rush in, and all the crowd had to be pushed out of the way, and it just come, you know I don't want to say it ruined the song because you know I would feel bad saying that, but the guy was okay. Point <laughs> is, is that I didn't truly get to uh, experience it the way I had always dreamed of doing, but um, what we're about to do is is far uh, more fulfilling and rewarding and special for me. Okay. So, and don't forget to watch. Oh, yeah. Right. Hey, Andrew. It's Ready? Here we go. It's going to play for a while.
What do y'all want to hear? No. No? Uh, ooh, yeah. Well, thanks for it. Thanks for Where dreams are made on, you mean I'll become a one street tomato? A one street tomato? Worth $5. We're $55 away from dancing shoes? No, $350. We are three hundred fifty five dollars away from dancing shoes. I thought it was six. Oh, this is a pretty good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Justin Leger asks, Where were your gigs in the early days of high school? Where were your gigs in the early days of high school? Uh, who are the members who have been there since the inception and who has been added on chronologically? So who has been in the band since the birth and who has been added on since then? So let's talk about the early gigs. The early gigs. Cafe Caffeine. <laughs> Moxie, <laughs> South Congress. Um, Our first South Where by Southwest we played outside of Mooksie, and it was just phenomenal. Um, Cafe Caffeine, we played a lot of cafes. Uh, Irving, Austin, Austin Java, one of our favorites, La Casa Fresca. <laughs> we uh, hit our band on that stage, but basically the answer is coffee shops. And the best part about it was that the, cool, the great thing about Austin, which is probably the great thing about this whole world, is that people were willing to take risks and they took a risk on us. They had four of us string players, high school. We probably saw, thought we were going to play Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> you know how that goes. But anyways, we were given a chance. You have given us a chance. And we are forever grateful. Second answer, second answer to the second part of the question. So from inception. Who has been here? <laughs> <laughs> so the very beginning was me, and then Nick Calvin, who uh, had to leave because of school stuff. You know, it's a school night. Thank you so much for staying up late for us. You know, it means a lot. Um, Italo Benavides and Austin Harris, basically a bunch of high schoolers who had nothing better than to do than to make things up and a dream. And Thomas Clay and Ian Henry, old school. We used to go back, we were a rock band, and then we changed into an orchestral group. That's a different question. <laughs> um, since then, it's, and then Claire Puckett and Isaac Winburn uh, from rival, much more beautiful, well, beautiful high school, a uh, very beautiful high school, uh, McCallum, McCallum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, basically, uh, it's college again, we do um, Reed Andrade. Reed Andrade and Marie Shema, who we met like when we were eight or nine years old. Um, so wow. that's been since, yeah, that's been since the beginning. Um, we used to be in a quartet called the Red Armada Quartet. Um, local composers in town, Grand Reynolds, the musicians, he would write pieces for us and we would play them in off spaces. And that was sort of the introduction to how classical music could be taken into a different realm. Something that's been infectious and uh, as a desirable objective as we, have, we are now. If uh, you want to hear some really deep ball music, uh, you could share a link, Ryan, of the Red Armada Quartet, because I'm pretty sure the MySpace page is still up. Red Armada. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I oh. think well, it's not with the new MySpace. Uh, well, it's probably somewhere in the annals of the internet, if you look, uh, for the Red Armada. Annals, eh? And then yeah. as, yeah. as the bands <laughs> progress, uh, <laughs> we've all met through different ways. Um, a lot of us, uh, the rest of us met through college. Clara and I met because uh, she was the only person not wearing orange on game day. She was wearing green. Look at orange. Actually, the way we met is that we were But it's funny because Grace and I had just met in the music building. In our, we were in the same freshman interest group. We were in the big together, and then I met Nick completely separately within the first month of school. Because the cafeteria door wouldn't open. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't. 
Yeah, so we're, we're, we'll, what we'll do is just go find links along. You'll basically piece together our inspiration, see if there's anything. <laughs> you can hear me singing for the first time as a young boy um, <laughs> in one of, my, one of the bands. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> stories to come. Right now, we'll play you a song. We'll continue this for the evolution of Mother Falcon after this. But remember, we have two, three more hours. We have two and a half more hours left in our Indiegogo campaign, and we need you and your help to help us get to New York and LA and to pitch our album and to bring our music to you. Unless you're an awesome, in which case I guess you have to die. Whoa, Clara just had a crazy. I, I would like to point out that this is like a, a, a new age version of busking. This is how we met Clara. Indeed. Busking on the street. Indeed. So here we are, are come me. full circle, but I didn't know you were different. I'm a busker bus 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 also. And so I'm a busker. Well, anyway, more <laughs> stories to come after. Oh my god! Oh. After oh. Oh. Oh.
that I care. You are behind my sanctuary. You are behind my sanctuary. You are behind my sanctuary. You are behind my And I've been in the band 
then the next person to join, I think, was no, I think it was Matt. Uh, I think it was Matt Puckett. In the summer, he had a summer. Yeah, introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Puckett. Hi, I'm Matt Hi. Puckett. Matt. Hi, Hi Dr. brother. I was. Well, well, only because it would have gone. Well, well, exactly. Uh, no, I'm Matt. I'm a third brother. Uh, I. Uh, graduated college in 2009, I guess right after you joined. I thought you had been in for longer, but surprise. Now I know. Uh, but yeah, I just graduated, came back to some, uh, thought I would just help help out in ways that I could, and just kind of got roped in, kind of like everyone else showed up for one thing, just to do one one thing on one day, and then it was a couple things across a few different days, and then I was finishing the EP, and then it was... There's one gig that you're out of town. Yeah, yeah it's the blank. Time. I still have the set list for yeah. that show in my saxophone case. Featuring such such songs as Ant Bites. Shout out to Austin Harris. Yeah. 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 Somewhere in Austin Harris. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. So we're going to play the song that follows the last song we played. Ooh, the last song we played was Sanctuary, which is from our uh, 2011 <laughs> album Alhambra, uh, as I would be pronounced by the lovely John Ailey, who we adore. Um, and the next song we're going to play is called Drown Me in the River. Please don't play. You should please talk about Anne. Please donate. Oh, yeah, you should talk about Anne. Please, please uh, donate. We need more money. Two and a half hours. $16,500. Guys, we're sixteen and a half thousand dollars away from our goal. Sounds fun. Donate.
Oh, where's the chest? Somebody else, somebody said, Serpent Punch next? Whoa! Wow. 
Oh, yeah. So we're going to share, so as part of Brother Bucket, we like to, uh, we don't take ourselves very seriously. In case you, okay, shh. Okay, in case, so, you know, we like to hang out, as you can tell from this Google Hangout, um, and often we don't take ourselves too seriously, so we often write alternative lyrics uh, to our songs, and this is an Indiegogo exclusive, and Gilman, if you're listening, um, this one's for you. Um, so, let's see. Child said in May, I'm going to throw a temper tantrum and ruin your day. Child says in May, I'm going to get really drunk and steal your toupee. <laughs> so, those are the alternative lyrics. And on that note, so we had to
Yeah, what Marigold. book and then don't is Marigold based from? <laughs> what book is Marigold based from?
Alright, so we're gonna do some switch arounds. I think a few of us have to go to the bathroom. And we're gonna have some of the members of Mother Falcon and the Wall play jazz. A lot of them are in a group called the Altered Five. They're gonna do a short little mini set. And then some of the string players are gonna come on and do a little mini set. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tamir and I and a few others will want to do a mini gypsy music set. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're going to move into that. That's all it's called all blues. Five miles. Yeah. Yeah. So so we did like, like, a, like a.
right. Mother Falcon is back. That was the Altered 5 plus Matt Krolik and Matt Bucket. The Matt. The Altered 5 and the Matt. The so we are Mother Falcon being brought to you by uh, Mother Falcon. And uh, we're here tonight uh, to promote the last, uh, let's see, hour and 40 minutes of our Indiegogo campaign. We've been running strong and running hard thanks to all of y'all out there on the interwebs. So now we are going to resume the Mother Falcon set after that wonderful uh, interlude. Um, okay. So we're going to uh, we're going to resume the Mother Falcon set with a song by the lovely Claire Puckett. Now Claire Puckett has been on the road for uh, approximately a month, and so we are absolutely elated that she's back here with us. And yeah, so thank you so much, everybody, for supporting us and for hanging out with us on Google, on the internet, and for staying true and sticking with us. Where to rock? Okay. Hello. I'm gonna play a song. Uh, this is a song I wrote in high school. Actually, I was gonna play porcelain, but we don't have a tuner or a capo, so it's not gonna work out. Um, yeah, I wrote this for an assignment. <laughs> In high school. I remember it. Sky black blue 
when Please, you have the <laughs> So when you have the album in your hands, that'll be track number ten. And we highly recommend you trying to sync up this song to this shining. If you're joining us now in this late late hours, we are Mother Falcon. Thank you so much. These are the last hour hour of uh, Indiegogo. Thank you so much for your donations. Any more would help immensely. Either way, thank you for bringing us up. Being up with us. Thank you. And this one is, this song is a thank you for those who stayed with us. Sorry about that, ladies. <laughs> Gentlemen.